Welcome back to the Wild Police. Second podcast today was a perfect stage in Criterion Dauphine where one of what one just choked the finish. He celebrated too early, like Julian Alla Philippe Liege, Boston Liege in 2020. This is historic moment. And yeah, today we will discuss like also all sorts like congrats and Nachka or Gabriel Strojic. What the hell happened in Criterion Dauphine stage three finish, which will be remembered for a long time. Uh, Yamba Lisma paced really hard with Jonas Wingard on, on the final climb. With three kilometers yeah, it was it wasn't it wasn't super hard but it was decent pace yeah there because, was still like good amount of riders there yeah because there are many attacks and yeah you, you might want to just control the situation because they got Primoz Roglic and Walton Art to three good sprinters then yeah we saw the Mark Padun got dropped with three kilometers to go so yeah Mark Padun isn't in the, in the best shape maybe we'll see what he can do in the final two stages like in last year and then uh his teammate Sean Quinn got crashed. He's actually pretty fast. He finished, I think, third on in on the first stage. Yeah, I think he could have been a real threat today, considering that David Godu won, who is I, I think Sean Quinn probably even faster, maybe, at least on a flat stage. Like he could have definitely been up there for the win today. But yeah, the leader, Alexis Vier Moz, he also got dropped. Yesterday's stage winner uh, from breakaway, Chris Froome also got dropped yeah, for some time. Yeah, Froome, Froome got dropped like 500 meters to the crest, I think. And I think also uh, the pace actually put Van Aert in, in problems. He was at the back at the of the peloton uh, at the top of this climb before the one kilometer flat plateau that we had at the end to finish the stage. And I think Roglic then slowed it down at the front for... Yeah, he followed an attack from Ben O'Connor or something and then slowed it down afterwards. So Val van Aert can get, come back. Uh, Wingard led him up the peloton. He was, yeah, in pretty good position then at the end. And, yeah, launched a sprint at the start. I think La- Victor Lafay first looked like he was fast, but Van Aert gained. And, but <laughs> out of nowhere, David Godou came from three wheels back or something. I had yeah. to squeeze through a tiny gap as well at the, to the right side. Van Aert already celebrating, but, yeah. Go to overtakes him easily on the bike roll. Like it wasn't even close, like with Ala Philippe. It was, I think, on the photo finish, you can see it's half a wheel easily. Yeah, I... it's crazy because Dolly Gadu was uh, at the back of the group. Then Kevin Genietz, his teammate, Luxembourg champion, brought him up. And yeah, then he went through like a gap. Yeah, even like, yeah, I see. Holy fuck, he was, yeah, three, four riders deep and. Yeah, holy fuck. Damn. Yeah, like this was God was not in a good position really. And beating Valfanart, who is supposed to be a green jersey candidate, a top sprinter according to some, on this flat finish, like what? Van Art completely choked us, let's be honest. If you are considered a top five rider in the world, if this is your stage, Van Art is considered as the cleaner of uh hilly sprint race basically you have to win the stage against David Godou I think Jumbo Visma should have let out Roglic today because he is much more consistent on these kind of stages he, I think he would have beaten Godou easily yeah like right now I'm wearing Jumbo Visma hat for his <laughs> performance by Walter Art like fuck you it's disgraceful so I won't wear it anymore on this and this episode. is not the first time this is not the first also, time that in Liege, Art... Boston and Liege he lost yeah. to Quinton Hermans like fucking Quinton Hermans on the and yeah. this is not the first time this has happened a lot like last year Bravan Sapel he lost to Pitcock Pitcock we probably I, I think Rahul or Sandres has tweeted this but like we're starting to realize now that probably Pitcock isn't even that fast it was just yeah. Van Aert choking again um, he also lost to, to Pitcock in Amstel Gold Race he nearly lost to Pogacar in Olympics road race in the sprint. Like his sprint is just not that good. And it's not even um it's not even only the sprinting that he chokes and in, in big races. Like, yeah, bad tactical decisions or yeah, just not having the legs in, in, in moments where you would expect him to have the legs. Like Yeah, the problem with Arthur Art, he is great at everything, but he isn't the greatest at anything. So yeah, he in Tour of France uh, there's a high chance the same thing might happen, but there will be Talai Pogacar, who's even better than Dawid Godou. I said the Mejev stage, uh, 20 kilometer, 4 percent. I said that would be the stage for Van Aert. After today, like you, you can't believe he's winning that. That's that climb yeah. is even harder than today. And Pogacar is probably actually quite a bit faster than 
then go do it today. And he, yeah, like you can't trust him, Wout van Aert. I think he has to be. You, I, I wouldn't give him freedom for the green jersey. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm saying you how it is. Like I think if you have Roglic, who's easily like at least the second best rider in the race, you have to send everything for him and Vingegaard as well because he's yeah a great second option, also top five rider in the Tour de France. You can't you can't let Van Aert off the hook for chasing a, a green jersey dream that he'll lose to Jasper Philipsen anyways. Imagine if the pace on that measure of finish, Pogacar wins, takes 10 bonus seconds, and Roglic works for one of Van Aert. It most likely it will happen. Like It will be interesting to see what is happening in Jan Boisma bus after this stage. As Vingigard, you also can't be happy. You're a GC rider in this race, like second favorite in the odds, and you have you, you were completely working for Wout van Aert's stage win. And then he loses to David Godou. It's Roglic as well. He could have won this stage. I mean, Roglic probably doesn't give a fuck about the stage, but like, what? How can you lose that stage? I can't believe it. Okay, about more happier things. Chris Froome finished 35th, only 31 seconds behind David Godou, with, together with Michal Kwiatkowski. So yeah, it was a, a nice performance from Froome. Yeah, he's improving, showing some signs. He's improving yeah it kind of reminds me of the same level as when he was uh i think stage six last year in the dauphine that uh, valverde won that he also got dropped by not that much and short yeah, yeah. similar kind of signs uh, he lost yes. on that stage uh, two minutes and 43 seconds but that yeah was but that was, that was harder and he was like also like 30 or something i believe on that stage maybe a bit further down but that was also okay I, kind of reminds me of that i had hoped for more personally but yeah, it's 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 not bad. It's it's not uh, Chris Room getting dropped on the first climb of Tim Merlier in the Tour de France last year. Yeah, he might improve even during this pre-term Dauphine, like uh, Mark Bullen showed last year, and uh, maybe he will be even better in Tour de France, probably. Yeah, we can hope that for sure. And like this, this pretty much at least means he's a functional world tour rider and probably deserves to go to the TDF again, considering like. Yeah, he's, pr- he's probably a top 10 rider on Israel. Yeah, he was the best finisher from Israel did today. Like <laughs> The second best was Slavon Clark, who finished one minute and one second. Then oh, Omer man. Goldstein, who lost one minute and 40 seconds. And yeah, Chris Room is the best climber on this uh, Israel <laughs> Dauphin squad. Yeah, I mean, it's not too good. I think they sent the best riders to, to the Swiss. But yeah, it's, 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 it's something. But yeah, GC wise, nothing changed on this stage. No one really interesting dropped. Alexis Viremos dropped, I guess, which Van Aert yesterday called. <laughs> he is smarter and stronger and should be the favorite for today's stage. So I don't know what's mm. going on in that man's head and in his legs either, looking yeah, at the he sprint. But Ram- anyways, Ramco in the World Champs, no, no, Fox Roglic. Probably will fuck uh, the yeah, Roglic d- in Tour d- 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 no. He's the World Championship. Stuff from Van Aert is still the most incomprehensible to me because he ruined his own chances with his terrible tactics and also ruined Remco's chances and then also ruined Jasper Stoyven's chances. How, how can you fuck over so many people in one way? But yeah, I won't go into that topic too much because otherwise we'll probably be sitting here an hour or something. Tomorrow is a very important stage time for all more than 30 kilometers. Probably Van Aert will talk also that. My, my, maybe Roglic will beat him there, but yeah, the Roglic winning. Yeah, so yeah, let's end this podcast and yeah, fuck you, what an art. <laughs>